My name is Jamie Dorley. I'm the co-founder, along with Dr. Jane White of Nutrition Frontiers. I'd like to welcome you to our summer professional training event. I appreciate everyone making it out today on such a beautiful Saturday in June, so it sure beats fighting the snow, I guess, at the last seminar. We appreciate you guys investing the time, and we have an excellent day planned for you. So I'd just like to quickly introduce a couple of people on our team, so they're just going to raise their hand. Mike Gallagher, is he in the room? So Mike is the uh, regional consultant. If you need anyone to help you, he is instrumental in helping you implement nutrition in your practice. We have Joe Vecino. So if you need any help, Joe's here, joining our team today and supporting us. Rashid Coates, all the way from Fort Myers, Florida. We have a special um, person on our team that just joined the team as a intern, and hopefully she'll be on full, team, uh, full time when she's done. That's Robin. And Candace is in charge of all of our education and PowerPoints. If you have any type of educational tools, she's the one. She's in the back. And there's Mike Gallagher there. We introduce you, Mike. So we have a very special guest today. And if you need anything at all, just ask any people, uh, anybody on our team. So the schedule is going to go like this. We're going to start right now at 10. Maybe take a quick break around 11. Part 2 this morning will be 11 to 12. And then from 12 to 1, we have a free, healthy lunch provided for you right down the hall. So you get something to eat, maybe go outside for a little quick walk. We'll get started right back at 1. For the afternoon, we'll have two sessions. So we'll do, the whole theme is really to help with energy in the body. So he's going to go through adrenal, detoxification, hormones, and then, of course, insulin resistance. So we're going to finish up right at 3 o'clock. At the end of each session, what we'll do is give you a protocol guide so you guys can get all the protocols. So this is a uh, special guest here. He is a pioneer in the industry in functional medicine. I consider him a uh, close friend and also a mentor. He did his undergraduate at Stony Brook, which is in Long Island, where Rashid and myself grew up. He grew up in Philadelphia, and I guess he's a smart guy. He realized he doesn't want to stay in Philly. So he went to New York for undergraduate. He went to the Pennsylvania um, School of Medicine for his medical degree. And then he did his internship and two fellowships right at the University of Pittsburgh. So he has a close tie to the Pittsburgh area. He loves it. We went to his favorite restaurant last night. And he is actually an MD endocrinologist. And he is certified in anti-aging, diabetes, and metabolic maintenance. So he started the Institute of Hormonal Balance in 2008 in Orlando, Florida. And this is, without a doubt, I've been over 2,000 offices, one of the most complete facilities I've seen in the country. So let's give a nice warm welcome to Dr. Edwin Lee. Great. Uh, so thank you for coming out on a beautiful Saturday. I enjoyed it. Uh, I used to live in Pittsburgh uh, when I did uh, um, my training in critical care and endocrinology there. And uh, since I've been living in Florida close to 20 years, uh, everything is flat. And right now it's hot and humid, and the weather here is just, it's just gorgeous. So uh, I miss those like rolling hills. And so last night I went after we went to Mallorca, um, my wife was really jealous because I showed her a picture of uh, Paella. And uh, when we went to actually to uh, Barcelona, I was telling my wife uh, the Paella is better in Pittsburgh at Mallorca versus, versus uh, the one at, uh, in Barcelona. But anyway, um, it's, it's just beautiful. I just lo lo love Pittsburgh. And uh, I grew up in Allentown, Pennsylvania, it's the other side of the state, and I feel more connected uh, to Pittsburgh than in Allentown. So I'm gonna be talking about energy, and also I wanted to talk about weight loss, because I think a lot of um, healthcare providers see patients all day, and you hear all day long, I can't lose weight. And so I'm gonna kinda give a different spin to it. And I thought I was just gonna only speak like an hour, because you know, I, generally that's what you know, most, most requests are, but, uh, Jamie's like a slave driver. It's like, no, I want four hours. <laughs> and it's like, I complained to my wife. It was like, four hours. Like, holy cow. <laughs> so uh, at the end of the day, I may not be able to talk. I'll, I'll have to use sign language. <laughs> so there's uh, four major topics. Uh, I'm not going to go exactly in this order. It'll be uh, detoxification, <laughs> thyroid, adrenal fatigue, and insulin resistance. And uh, we're going to start with. Uh, 
adrenal fatigue. And just raise your hand if you see you know, people or patients in your office. They're tired, fatigued, they want to lose weight, they're tired of being tired, they're exhausted, uh, they just can't sleep well, they're irritable, they, they're just, uh, everything's falling apart, they can't, you know, they can't think right, they have brain fog. Just raise your hand if you kind of see those people. All right, so. Uh, raise your hand if you actually um, you're a healthcare provider. I'm just curious. Uh, okay, majority, great. So I'm one of the few endocrinologists um, that believe in adrenal fatigue. And uh, I remember giving a talk in Las Vegas. And um, anyway, I remember, this was some time ago, uh, there was this one doctor listening and she just really, she happens to be in Leeds, uh, actually in Gainesville, Florida, and uh, we became good friends, but she just, she just was like a deer, like staring at a headlight uh, during the talk, and she just was so surprised that there's an endocrinologist that agrees about adrenal fatigue. So this is what you know, you hear in your practice all day long, tired of being tired, I don't sleep well, my memory's gone, I have a short fuse, I have no sex drive, and I want to lose 100 pounds, doc. And it's like, yeah, I have a magic wand I got on eBay, and uh, it's coming. And I just have to wave it like that, and bang. So uh, anyway, so let's see, OK. So adrenal fatigue is common. I actually had adrenal fatigue myself um, in 2008. Um, I, I had a very successful practice. Uh, when I finished my fellowships at University of Pitt, I had a job offer back in Allentown, Pennsylvania, where I grew up. And uh, I had uh, a job offer back um, at the hospital that I trained at, Lehigh Valley Hospital. And I was gonna, I, I really respected uh, the physicians, that, the endocrinologists that were there. And I told my father um, that I have a, job offer back in Allentown. And you know, he's, he was, he's been there, my parents have been there for probably 50 years. And uh, my father said to me, don't come back here. Go someplace nice so we can visit you during the winter time. <laughs> and I'm looking at him, I go, really? I was like, yeah, because just, you know, go someplace nice. So I, I, I interviewed uh, Hawaii and Southern Cal and the Sunshine State Belts and Arizona and finally found a place in Florida. And um, I, became, I actually found a spot that it was a multi-specialty clinic in Winter Haven, Florida. It's very, um, it's actually a growing town now, but uh, anyway, when I was there, it actually was very, very small. Um, and uh, anyway, my wife was shocked, but uh, they never had an endocrinologist in this town. And I said, how cool would it be the first endocrinologist in, in Winter Haven? And uh, I, I became the team doctor for, uh, endocrinologist uh, for the Cleveland Indians, because that's where they train uh, during spring break. And uh, so I was there for 10 years, and then I decided, after going to some conferences, that uh, I really want to do something different. I don't want to do conventional endocrine. I'm just tired of seeing 30, 35 patients a day, you know, just Band-Aid approach. I really love nutritional me medicine, functional medicine, and I really wanted to change ship. So I actually decided to open my own practice in, or um, I wanted to go Orange County, California, but after a while going there, I couldn't find any place to uh, even rent uh, in Newport Beach. So I actually, um, second place was uh, Orlando, Florida. So anyway, I ended up in Orange County, Florida. And anyway, it's, uh, 2008 was the depression, recession. And uh, I, I, just, I actually had a very successful practice. Big fish, small little, you know, small little lake. And uh, basically, I went to this, uh, um, moved to Orlando, which is about an hour away. And a week before I started my practice, I asked my wife, do you think I'll make it? Uh, not accepting insurance, not accepting Medicare, not going to the hospital, not taking call, and a fee for service, and no one knows me. And my wife said, this is, honestly, I, I asked this question, she denies it, so she denies her response. She goes, I don't think so. <laughs> and and uh, so I was like, can you call 911? Because there's a knife in my back. 
but uh, I've been blessed, and, and uh, I had adrenal fatigue then. Uh, so I was, uh, you know, just was like, can you survive? Can you? I just really went two feet into basically a practice that uh, you have to have some business sense, and I had zero business sense. I mean, I didn't know like a two days before starting my practice, you need a credit card machine. One of my friend goes, do you have a credit card machine? It's like, oh, you need that too, yes. <laughs> All right, so um, a lot of people with adrenal fatigue, they tend to be emotional eaters. They tend to stress eat. And you know, they, they may say, you know, I don't eat much, but they don't tell you how much snacking they do. And you know, when they start losing weight, I know for 20 years doing this, they'll, they'll, they'll later tell you, yeah, I forgot to tell you, you know, those brownies, you know, I stopped eating that and then I started losing weight. It's like, okay. So adrenal fatigue is a vicious cycle. You basically, you're, you're too tired to exercise, you're exhausted. You tend to have stress, you, you're an emotional eater, you stress eat. You, you basically increase your, uh, you can have initial rise in cortisol. And also your cortisol levels can drop, so then you, they, uh, inhibit your thyroid, so you, uh, you're going to have a decrease in reverse T3. So it, it, it's kind of a vicious cycle, and you're, you're kind of metabolically doomed um, for weight gain. So your adrenal glands, um, we all have two adrenal glands, uh, and they're on the top of uh, each kidney. They kind of look like a dunce hat. They're, um, you know, just sit on top of uh, the right kidney and left kidney. And they, they secrete a lot of different hormones. Um, and they, they're broken up in terms, of the, in terms of the outer cortex and the inner um, cortex. And uh, the, actually, um, you can see here, there's a cross section of the adrenal gland. And that's kind of just, there's, there's, there's the medulla in the very mid middle. And then there's the zona glomerulosis, zona uh, fasciculata, and the zona uh, reticularis. And uh, the thing is that the medulla, or inside, basically secretes the catecholamines, the epinephrine, norepinephrine, and all that. So, you know, it's, it's the stress and flight. And if you see, let's say, if you get, like, last night I was walking kind of like in the dark, because um, I was trying to find this Walgreens, and my iPhone goes, oh yeah, two more minutes. But I forgot it was like I was walking, so I thought it was a car. So it became like, like 30 more minutes. And it was kind of really dark. And, and I, I was like going down this road, um, Mansfield, Mansfield Road, and then make a left in Nobleton. And Nobleton all of a sudden like didn't have a sidewalk. There was, there was no sidewalk anyway, but it was, just like, it was like zero pedestrian uh, friendly uh, road. And it was like a lot of turns. And I remember all, all of a sudden I was like walking. I just heard this sudden noise. It probably was a rabbit, but I jumped. And it's like, so I, that's how my catecholins went up. But the, that's the inner medulla, and then the outside is really your um, cortex, and it makes three different hormones, so we'll go through that. So um, the way I remember um, the three hormones is I have a mnemonic, and uh, you can, you know, this is classic, you know, aldosterone, cortisol, and your uh, androgens, or DHEA. But I think of sugar, salt, and sex. So I tell my patients, you know, your adrenals make really three hormones, actually more than three hormones, but it's sugar, salt, and sex. And they, they kind of understand that. And I have patients I've followed for over you know, close to 15, 18 years, and they still, oh yeah, 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 the sugar, salt, sex. So uh, the sugar is really your cortisol, um, and that's the fuel in your body. And if you make zero cortisol, zero, guess what happens? You're dead, exactly. In 12 hours, you're dead. So you need cortisol. Cortisol is the fuel in your body. Salt is aldosterone. So a lot of people with adrenal fatigue, they get lightheaded, so the aldosterone's low. And then they have no sex drive because their DHEA is low, too. So um, there's a feedback system, the hypothalamic pituitary adrenal um, pathway or the loop. And it starts like, for just FYI, if I just, I won't do this, but Imagine if I had a pencil between my ears and a pencil between my eyes, where the two pencils intersect. That's the pituitary gland. That, that little gland secretes a lot of hormones. And above the pituitary is a little other gland called the hypothalamus. So the hypothalamus is really the master, 
endocrine gland because it secretes uh, different hormones. Like uh, for, for this pathway, it secretes CRH, cortico-releasing uh, hormone. And then the pituitary secretes uh, ACTH. And then uh, ACTH stimulates the adrenals to make cortisol. And if you have adequate cortisol levels, then your CRH actually drops down. So it's a, it's a negative feedback loop. So here's an image of basically the hypothalamic and the pituitary gland. And um, anyway, I actually told my kids about it. And they go, come on, Dad, do it. Put, your, put the pencil between your ears. <laughs> So um, in the hypothalamic area, there's this, this is more like neuro, for those interested in neuroendocrine, the, it goes a little more into this, but the paraventricular nucleus. And you know, in 2011, I gave a talk uh, in Vegas about adrenal fatigue, and I really got into the um, kind of the neuroscience. So I was like looking at the slides. Of my, I haven't looked at these slides since like 2011, and I'm thinking, Who's the idiot that wrote all these slides? <laughs> this junk. So I, I kind of re, re, revived them. So it's, it's amazing. You're, you're like your own tough critic. But um, there's a couple different nuclei for the hypothalamic area, and they, they actually uh, secrete different parts. Uh, so the para, para uh, or PV, um, the para, parvocellular neuron um, basically secretes all these like hormones CRH, TRH, GNRH, uh, GNRH, which is your uh, growth hormone releasing hormone. And, um, and you can see that the other one secretes oxytocin and vasopressin. So now we all have stress. We, you know, without stress, you know, life would be boring. So we have, um, unfortunately, too much stress in our life. And uh, stress is really handled by a little gland that's like an almond-shaped gland, a structure. It's um, basically in the center of our limbic systems. It's called the amygdala. And the amygdala basically can perceive stress, and it's like an alarm system. And it, it basically, once, once it gets that signal that there's some external stress, boom, it sends out these chemical messages and then uh, it basically activates your hypothalamic area and then basically your cortisol basically is increased. So stress is a natural phenomenon. It, um, it's our perception to, uh, to any particular uh, uh, event, whether it's emotional or um, it's life or death. And uh, anyway, um, what, what happens is that uh, it, if we're constantly stressed, like in the typical US, I mean, if you kind of go overseas and see that a lot of these, Euro, lot of these countries, uh, not all the countries, but there are countries basically, you know, they take nice long breaks and uh, siestas and just a different lifestyle. And here, it's just like go, 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 go. So, I mean, it's, we have to really kind of balance with work and, uh, and vacation too. So, um, th this, this cat right here has a lot of stress. And my, my one son, when he was a baby, we had a, a cat uh, named Buttercup. And Buttercup was so nice to him because uh, he would like, the way he would pet Buttercup is, he was like, like under a year old. He would like pet once, and then the second one, he would grab as much hair and try to rip it out. And Buttercup's like, look at me, like, come on. <laughs> but Buttercup was nice. <laughs> but uh, anyway. Um, so adrenal fatigue is a condition that, um, you know, we, we're going to have to um, have our cortisol be elevated, but if you have too much stress, it goes 24-7, eventually you're, you're, you're going to deplete your cortisol. And that's kind of the, the scenario that you're probably going to see. Um, so just curious, by raising your hand, who does um, saliva testing? All right, right. So you guys have seen this. Um, this is the classic pattern. Um, your cortisol will be basically normal, but um, in stage one, you're going to have very high cortisol levels to handle the acute stress, and then over time, your cortisol kind of bottoms out. So what I you know, see typically in my practice when we do a four-point cortisol test and when they're complaining of adrenal fatigue, um, you know, I, I see cortisol levels kind of flatline, and typically it should be highest in the morning and lowest in the evening. So it's really important to see where they're at, because uh, therapy will basically depend on what, what their cortisol levels are. 
Some people are backwards or low in the morning and high at night, and some people are like, a, like, a, like a, the letter M goes up and down, up and down. So um, they're all over the place. But typically, like 90% of my patients, they're, generally if they're complaining of adrenal fatigue symptoms, their cortisol levels are kind of flatlined. And that's not a good sign because they have a higher risk of developing, guess what? So, yeah, cancer, so, cool. What's your name? Ella, all right, so cool. So, um, there are many different factors that can cause adrenal glands, and, I mean adrenal fatigue, and uh, leaky gut is uh, another thing that I could talk for an hour, but uh, there's you know, allergies, you can have uh, chronic infection, you can have emotional stress, a divorce, uh, financial stress, it's just, um, your, my, my one son who's in seventh grade, just finished seventh grade, that, that he, I think he aged me by like 10 years. Um, so just, um, I don't know how you can raise teenage girls, but uh, <laughs> fortunately, well, I have two, boy, two young boys, but sometimes they act like girls, but anyway. <laughs> so um, the thyroid uh, can be affected with abnormal cortisol. Uh, so elevated cortisol is may suppress TSH, um, and you, so I see that a lot. I mean, I had a, a patient uh, I followed for years, um, and uh, she was asymptomatic in terms of she didn't have hyperthyroid symptoms, but her TSH was always low, and she had a normal free T3, normal free T4, but uh, I, you know, I was asked to see her, and every time I would see her, I'd say, you know, how's your stress? And she goes, it's fine. And I followed her for about five years, every six months, and thyroid test was basically um, just like TSH suppressed, 0.03, and with normal free T4 and normal free T3, uh, normal free T3 and normal free T4. And then, um, like on the fifth year later, she, it came back normal, and I, her TSH went back to normal. And I said, so what happened? And she goes, oh, my son can't, came back from Iraq. I was like, oh, yeah. So, you know, they don't tell you everything, you know, like it's one of those things that people tend to hide their stress, and that's the thing. So um, if you're stressed out, your TSH will be low. That's, that's one of the reasons that you can, you can see. Um, high or low cortisol will increase the conversion T4 to an inactive hormone. We'll talk more about this, reverse T3. And then um, your cortisol levels can block the entry of uh, T3 into the cell. So you really need T3 to get into our cells to uh, activate um, uh, production of energy. It's funny, I, I can't remember why I have this picture, but this is me uh, with one of my patients. Uh, and uh, I used to do tons of triathlon, but I've uh, recently herniated three of my uh, L345 of my uh, uh, back, so I, I gave up running and, uh, uh, and, and also golf and doing triathlons. But uh, they do have a, um, oh yeah, I remember that. So I remember 2008, I started my practice brand new, didn't know anyone, had zero patients, and uh, I've been you know, very blessed. I couldn't even, I couldn't even train. I used to, I, I lived to do triathlons. I, being an endocrinologist was a second job. That was just like to pay the fees to fly to California to, to, and New York City to race. Uh, that's, that's what I lived for. I lived to train and uh, compete, and uh, that was all before kids. But anyway, um, the thing was that when I had adrenal fatigue, I couldn't even jog. I couldn't even work out. I was exhausted, so over time, it got better, I took a lot of supplements, I checked my cortisol level to flat line, and then later, you know, I got better, and the thing is, uh, I was able to compete again. So, um, anyway, but I could still bike and swim, so there's something called aqua bike, so it's kind of a new category for people who can't run. <laughs> you just swim and bike. Uh, so, how do you know if you have adrenal fatigue? Um, so, we kind of went over this uh, briefly, but uh, I think the best test is a saliva test, a four-point cortisol test is, uh, is the best. And uh, the thing is that um, you know, if you do a one-point cortisol test, you really don't know because it's one point in time. You really got to see, um, you know, f I mean, you can get, the more dots that you have, the more data you're going to understand, you'll, you'll, you'll see that uh, where you're at. Now, 
you can do serum cortisol levels, serum ACTH, and yeah, if a cortisol is like, you know, two, and you know, that basically saying, well, you know, probably has adrenal fatigue, but usually it's never two or anything like that. Uh, usually it's, you know, you're gonna have a level like 12 or 14 or whatever, but you just don't know because you have a phlebotomist and it may, this phlebotomist, uh, you may have bad veins too. So you may have a beginner who's poking at the seventh one and goes, I think I can get it. And you know, your, your stress is up and your cortisol will be acutely elevated. So you're, you're basically gonna be jabbed and uh, you don't really know what your cortisol, I mean, if that person, you know, it was an easy a stick or not. The traffic of going, getting there, parking, standing in line. So it's all the elements there. That's why I like a saliva testing because, you know, you could do it at the comfort of your home. Um, Jamie? Well, I, there's many different good labs that uh, do uh, saliva testing, um, and uh, I'll just mention the ones that uh, I've used uh, in, uh, in the past and when I use, but uh, I've used, um, um, uh, well, ZRT I've, been, I've used in the past, and then uh, Labrix is a company that uh, I, I, I used, and now there's a company called Access uh, Medical, and uh, Anyway, I, I, I like uh, Access Medical because they, they, they have a, the way they actually look at their cortisol levels is uh, LCMS, liquid chromatography mass spectrometry. That's, I can never say that last one. And that's the gold standard. So they actually look, at, it's, 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 it's a very expensive machine. Um, so they actually, um, a, lot of, a lot of companies use a different technology to look at cortisol levels. LCMS. So uh, if just Google that, you, you can get the proper spelling, but it's liquid chromatography mass spect, and then there's 10 more words after spect. <laughs> um, all right, so saliva um, is actually, here, here, are the reasons, here are the reasons that's listed here. Blood only checks for total hormone levels, 95% uh, which are inactive. You really want to get the free levels. So when you do the saliva test, um, actually um, our salivary glands basically receives all these hormones. So if you spit in your hand, you know, if you have a dog there, they're going to lick that spit because it can taste all the hormones. Um, so you know, our spit has hormones. And the thing is that it's the free hormones. It's not the bounded one. So it has to go through, like imagine, uh, I don't drink coffee, but uh, there's, let's say, a coffee filter. So it's just like you put the coffee ground and then you know, basically water goes through. On, on, only the, you know, the pure coffee goes right through there. And that's, like the, the, you know, that's the hormones that kind of go through the salivary glands there. So uh, you're going to measure free hormones there. And the urine testing, basically, it doesn't really see the reflection of the pattern. I mean, you can kind of get a good sense, you know, what your 24-hour urine cortisol levels are, but it doesn't say you're low in the morning and high in the evening. So it, it doesn't reflect of the pattern. So um, I like the four uh, uh, sample of um, saliva testing throughout the day, um, and you can you can actually see exactly, and um, you can actually, with with looking at the data, I have patients come back, and we, we have a treatment plan. So here's some little literature about cortisol. And um, you can add DHEA to it. That's the DHEA comes from your adrenal glands. Um, so sometimes I actually do an eight panel. Uh, I, when patients come to see me, usually they sign up for my, our package. So we pr provide them with an eight panel saliva test that looks at the four cortisol DHEA testosterone, estradiol, and progesterone. Um, I really look at, I like the estrogen, estradiol progesterone ratio for women, to, you know, to see where they're at, to see if they have estrogen dominance or progesterone deficiency. Testosterone is not really the gold standard uh, in saliva testing, but anyway, it's included. And sometimes there's a discord uh, or disconnect where your saliva testosterone is really high, but your total testosterone is low or your free testosterone is low. So there's sometimes a disconnect there. But uh, anyway, um, in regards to the stages of adrenal fatigue, there's stage one, 
uh, where you have high cortisol level stage two comes down, stage three is even more, and stage four is uh, not a good sign. And I see a lot of people kind of at the very end of their, uh, their, they've been searching for help and they get frustrated. And when they, when you, when they come back and they, you say, hey, you have, uh, it's not all in your head, you do have a condition uh, and we can work on it and fix it. So I think that this is really important. So I have some cases here. Um, here's a, a woman named Abby, and she's tired. Her energy is uh, two out of 10, and she doesn't sleep. She's perimenopausal. Um, well, she's had erratic periods. It's going every two, three months. Uh, sh short fuse, she's irritable, uh, and she's some, more prone to depression, and she has no sex drive. Her libido is um, you know, in the tank. So, um, and then you just throw in, she wants to lose 100 pounds. <laughs> so um, here's her cortisol levels, and her cortisol basically is a little different. It's uh, kind of low in the morning, uh, drops down to uh, uh, really low in the noontime, and then it bumps up um, uh, in the dinner time, and then goes a little lower in the evening. So, she tends to be wired at night, that's the thing. So she has high cortisols in the evening and low, I mean, just overall it's erratic. So she's really hypothalamic pituitary axis of dysfunction. Um, so it's, it's, there's a couple things that you can do to basically help work with that. So um, you, I like to use phosphatilocerine. Um, I mean, I'm sure you've heard of phosphatilocerine, but it's really great to help lower those cortisols in the evening time and help, help them sleep. She, her complaint is she cannot sleep. She's 52, she probably has also estrogen, def, uh, I mean, beginning to have estrogen deficiency, but uh, I just wait until her, uh, I mean, uh, I, when her period's completely stopped, then I'll add the estradiol or est estriol. But she can definitely benefit with progesterone. And you know, you can, you can start at 50 milligrams and, or you can go up to, you know, uh, 200 milligrams, but I use a lot of, uh, I, this is a common dose I use, and most women tolerate it. And I tell that progesterone is a beautiful hormone. Uh, progesterone is really needed for better memory. It helps with libido, can help with uh, hot flashes, night sweats. Progesterone can pre reduce the risk of breast cancer. It can reduce endometriosis, fibroids. It can help you sleep better. But it also, also saves a lot of marriages. I've seen, I mean, I mean, although I have several patients who went through, couples that went through divorces, but you know, I don't think it's the hormones, it's because of them. But anyway, the thing is that I've, I have a lot of people who said, that, you know, this is the hormone that saved my life, saved my marriage, it's progesterone. So I know when my wife doesn't take progesterone, it's, it's, it's you know, so obvious. It's like, <laughs> what do you say? Like, honey, um, did you forget <laughs> to take progesterone? And then I have to get ready to duck because something's flying at my head. But... Uh, I mean, it's just night and day. And so my wife's been on progesterone for uh, probably over 10 years. And um, so uh, it, it's, there was one, one of my patients, he's an attorney. I, both, I see the husband and wife. And um, so the attorney, the, the husband said, he said something to me kind of funny. He goes, honey, I will listen to you, but the answer is progesterone. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So uh, vitamin B5, B6, C will help adrenal fatigue, 5-HTP uh, uh, to help with the depression, um, and then some melatonin uh, to help with sleep. Yes, Jay? Do you use progesterone for males also? Uh, good question. I have few patients uh, to help them sleep, but a lot of uh, couples that I see, the wife complains, my husband steals my progesterone <laughs> to help him sleep. So uh, yes, progesterone does help. Um, you know, there, there are a lot of guys who are, sh you know, short fuse, irritable. Uh, progesterone is fine. Um, I, I use a lower dose, maybe 25 to 50 milligrams. Does it really help with estrogen at all, lowering estrogen in males? Well, you do need estrogen or estradiol. I mean, if your estradiol is too low, you're going to have memory loss. So I'm, uh, there's a whole theory with testosterone uh, being up and uh, lowering estradiol, you know, to, for weight. Uh, to, to basically build muscle and all that. Um, I'm not too aggressive at lowering estradiol unless they're like 300 pounds and they, they, they really want to lose weight, so I'll, I'll give them an anti-estrogen just to help. But 
I, have not, I haven't really looked at the relationship with taking progesterone to lower estradiol. Um, so anyway, um, here's another woman, SS. She's a little older. Uh, she's 60 years old. Energy is 3 to 4, used to be a 10. Uh, she's gained 10 pounds in the past year. She's um, sweating like a pig. And uh, here's her cortisol. Here's her cortisol levels. And this is like my cortisol levels when I actually did the, the saliva testing. And uh, anyway, it's kind of flat line. Uh, not all the way to the bottom. I've seen it where it's literally, you know, flat as this table. So this is stage two, stage three, adrenal fatigue. It's not completely stage four, but uh, you can use uh, adaptogens. And I'm going to talk about diff several different adaptogens that you can use. Uh, rhodiola is one. Um, B5, B6, vitamin C. Adrenal glands love vitamin C. Uh, it helps uh, produce uh, uh, cortisol. You can use pregnenolone. Pregnenolone is a precursor of basically it's the mother hormone that can eventually get down. Um, to cortisol, but pregnenolone, it's like, like if you have a fork and you turn it upside down where like, you know, the bottom prongs on the bottom, pregnenolone's on the top. So on the bottom, it could be cortisol, it could be aldosterone, or it could be basically DHA. Remember, sugar, salt, sex. So pregnenolone can go either way. It doesn't, you don't know if it's going to go all this way to cortisol. It could kind of go the other ways too. So you're just assuming it goes down that pathway. Um, what I do a lot in our office is IV nutrition. And uh, does anybody offer IV nutrition in the office, intravenous nutrition? But um, anyway, IV nutrition, we give tons of vitamin C, 30 to 50 grams of vitamin C. Uh, and uh, do, do, you, do you offer IV nutrition? No. Not in my practice, and it's not even my standard of what I do. Oh, cool. OK. So you've seen the benefits of it. And I have people that are just they just love it, and they just come back and back and back uh, for it. Um, and you know, I tell my, some of my patients, you know, you may just need a course of it, like maybe 10, and then down the road, maybe do it when needed. Um, and some people need 20 or 30, but uh, just to help. It's not, it's not you know, I don't intend it for it to be life. It's just for people to get from point A to point B. It's going to help your metabolism. It will help your adrenal glands. It will help everything. Uh, because what we eat is supposed to get into our blood system, but if you have leaky gut, how do you know how much gets in? That's why we do IV nutrition. And then improve on insulin resistance. Um, I mean, if you take a dietary history, most people tend to have a lot of sugar craving and they tend to eat a lot of, um, they can clean up their diet. And then um, you can use progesterone to help uh, with uh, sleep there. So, uh, the, the basic treatment idea is to remove stress, and that's the biggest thing. Sometimes I listen to some of my patients and I say, you haven't had a vacation in 15 years or 20 years. You need to go on a cruise, turn off your phone, and just sleep. You just gotta, gotta just unwind. And that's the thing, is like, I know a lot of uh, doctors um, before my generation, they would take three months off. They just go in the woods, take three months off, and recover. Because, you know, we get so much stress. We hear everything, you know. It's just one of those things that it's just, you know, doctors and, uh, are probably have the highest adrenal fatigue because it's like, it's just go, 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 go. Um, but, uh, you know, you just have to reset the button and all that. And I remember one day, like, during my um, uh, fellowship training at University of Pittsburgh, um, my wife and I took a cruise for the first time, and uh, we didn't have much money. We, we kind of stayed in the inside cabin without the windows or the balcony, and there's a little TV monitor to tell you, you know, if you're in the port or not. And uh, I remember, like, on the fourth day, like, I was on the beach, and it felt literally like butter melting off your shoulder. And I was like, wow. And to that day, I still can't duplicate that. I want that feeling. <laughs> It's just, I need longer, I just, like kids, I guess, it's just, you'll never get until they get out of the house. But anyway, um, let's see, my eyes aren't that great, but uh, um, basically nutrients for your adrenal glands can, uh, will help in terms of getting your adrenals to work better. 
So treatment is what I usually give to my patients is sleep, 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 sleep. I have so many people that, you know, even I work on like their quality of sleep and quantity of sleep. And uh, uh, Bubba Watson, uh, actually in the newspaper, he's a really big golfer, he said something in the newspaper I read today, and he goes, because they, they had this, there's a big golf tournament, the U.S. Open and all that, and uh, my, my son's favorite golf player is Bubba Watson, and he, is this, is, he lives in Orlando, and he actually is an amazing golf player, and the thing is that he goes, if I play late tonight, 36 holes, I will not get my 12 hours of sleep, and I don't like that. So that's like, you know, Einstein required how many hours of sleep every night? Guess. Ten. How many hours of sleep do we get? <laughs> Nowhere near ten. <laughs> so if the smartest person and one of the best, best athletes you know, require a lot of sleep, that's, that's the thing. We just, you know, we're sleep deprived. We're up late at night, you know, whatever, Facebook or whatever. I don't even do Facebook, but the thing is that it's on the computer, emails, there's all these little things. And I tell my patients, you gotta really try to back down. And you know, I don't tell them, you know, if you go to bed 2 a.m., you gotta go to bed by 10, because that's impossible. I tell them, just go to bed 30 minutes earlier for one week, and you're gonna sleep, you're gonna be profoundly much better within a week if you get 30 extra, more, extra minutes of sleep. And then down the road, you do another, you know, you go back, you turn the clock a little. So you're trying to, I'm trying to get them seven to eight hours of sleep if possible. And you know, I know there's deadlines and there's last minute things and there's exceptions uh, down the road, but uh, you know, sleep is really important. And to offer them some, like they have problems with waking up three or four times in the middle of the night. I mean, you can use products that can help in terms of helping them sleep, uh, natural products. I, I don't really write any prescription medicine to help them sleep. Um, IV nutrition helps the especially vitamin C, high dose vitamin C and B vitamins and minerals. And, and there are a lot of natural supplements. So I have some patients who travel overseas to come to see me and they can't uh, come in for IV nutrition. So we give them some adaptogens. Uh, remove stress is really key. So I, you know, be, there was this thing that I used to tell my patients and they, I swear every time they left the office they thought I was crazy. Cause, uh, but um, anyway, I would tell them, this is before the YouTube phenomenon with uh, ALS. Um, and that is, uh, this is what ha happened to me. I actually developed shingles at a young age and my acupuncturist upstairs says, you're under too much stress. And she goes, you need to do an ice bucket rinse. And she goes, if when I die, no, I'm not gonna be famous, but I've done it for 30 years. And she started in Russia. She read this little book. She, did, she was in her early 20s. She had a lot of stress in life and she goes, I'm gonna change my life. So the next morning, she got up, she got a bucket of ice water. 5.30 in the morning, she went to the courtyard of these you know, apartment complexes in Russia, and it was pitch black, and she thought no one would ever see her. And she threw her bucket of ice water on her, and uh, she basically went back into her apartment. Later that morning, people were knocking on her door. It was like gossip, someone saw her. And Russia's interesting because they're a little more integrative uh, in terms of Eastern Western medicine because you know, they, they have both Europe and China right next door. So they, they, they're more open-minded. They loved, the request that she got was, can you do it on my child? Help her his immune system. They really loved that ice bucket room. So she had, she said, sure, I'll do it 5.30 every morning, make sure they bring their own ice bucket uh, of, of water. And she basically would have a club. And then if they're old enough, she eventually, you know, they had the polar bear club, they would jump in. So she did it for, she still does it for 30 years. So I've done it. And the key is, um, I tried to do it at home. So I was uh, a little scared. So I actually had a little plastic bucket filled with ice, went to the bathroom, filled up with water, put it in the shower, let it melt a little. But I brought a little Dixie cup. And I, I, I took a shower and then after that I got the Dixie cup and I'm throwing it on my head and I'm yelling and screaming and like a, like, a, like a wild person. And my wife comes into the bathroom and she doesn't know what I'm doing, but she goes, can you shut up? You're giving me a headache. So I'm closing my nose. And then I tell this to my acupuncturist. She goes, you're doing it all wrong. The whole th idea is to shock your system. Don't, don't you, know, you know, it's not Chinese torture and you do it for like 10 hours. 
Uh, and you've got to scream. And that's the problem. We don't scream. We don't let it out. That's the thing. We have to let it out. We tend to hold it all in. So, you know, you got to scream. So I dare my patients to actually do it and show me a video. And, and the thing is that uh, since that, uh, the ice bucket challenge came out, oh, I was like, thank God, I have redemption. But that was before the, <laughs> this ice bucket. Uh, that was years before that. So anyway, um, and then sometimes I use um, like cortisol. So sleep is crucial. Um, and the thing is, um, you know, I always ask, you know, how they sleep, are they able to fall back to sleep, do you have any pets in your room, do you have a, a spouse that snores like a freight train, so if they do, I tell, I even type it up, you know, you sleep in a separate room or your spouse sleeps in a separate room, and they thank me when they come back, because just, it's a delicate subject, but if you're the doctor and you write a, you know, a uh, recommendation, they go, look, I paid a lot of money to see this guy, and I ha you have to move out <laughs> to get that fixed. Um, so the other thing is that, um, you know, if your cortisol is deficient, this is an important, like, endocrine note here, your adrenal glands will release epinephrine in an attempt to break stored fat and protein to make glucose to supply the brain. So with adrenal fatigue, you're really not getting that cortisol to to feed the brain, so then you get it spikes up epinephrine, and then you get this. So it's one of those things that you got to fix adrenal fatigue also to, to help with that. And um, so I offer all my patients a sleep apnea study, and I, sometimes I see people very thin with with significant sleep apnea. You just can't look at them. Oh, you're a truck driver, body, you know, type, you know. Um, your BMI is 40, yeah, you definitely have sleep apnea. But I've seen people with uh, BMIs uh, very thin with, with sleep apnea. Um, and they're getting better and better in terms of therapy. Uh, if you can't wear that mask, sometimes they do, um, they can do, uh, there's a, a guy at Celebration Hospital, uh, he got recruited from, um, from Alabama because uh, he does, uh, they're doing everything, um, trying to do it, uh, through, uh, what do you call it, robotics. So he's actually um, can do robotic surgery to open up your airway. And uh, it's a little painful, but at the end it's, just, it's remarkable. I have some patients who thank me because they're off their blood pressure medicine, they're sleeping much better, they have phenomenal energy and they're doing great. So if you can't fix sleep, you're not gonna go anywhere. So you gotta get good sleep. Uh, melatonin, I use a ton of this, um, and uh, melatonin has been used in children with uh, chronic insomnia, um, sleep disorders, and they've been studying it for over 50 years, and they've shown no, no, no problems with that. Uh, four amino, three phenylbutyric acid uh, also helps, GABA, taurine, glycine, theanine, all can also help. So more about the four amino, three uh, phenylbutyric acid. Um, it's actually similar to that uh, uh, neurotransmitter uh, GABA, and you know GABA can calm, be, calm you down. So it's really, um, it's believed that it can cross the blood-brain barrier to kind of help with anxiety. Although I, I think I've seen also some people respond well with just GABA itself, but anyway, that's kind of the theory about the 4-amino-3 phenol butyric acid. Um, and, uh, you know, what's interesting in Russia, they have the most studies. Uh, it basically, they use it to help with anxiety, sleep disorder, depression, and uh, post-traumatic stress disorder. So here's some general guidelines, what you can do with adrenal fatigue. Um, and you guys have it in your notes there. But um, if they really have high cortisol levels uh, and you want to lower it down, you can use the phosphatidylserine. Um, you can use, um, you know, the vitamin Bs, vitamin C, um, and also to help sleep and lifestyle modification, really reduce stress. Phase two, you can use uh, rhodiola or, or other adaptogens, and uh, you can see add maybe pregnenolone. And then um, I rarely use uh, hydrocortisone or Cortef. Uh, I have very few people, probably less than on my fingers, that um, I use um, a hydrocortisone to help them. Um, and I do see a lot of people who've seen like maybe 60, 70 physicians uh, around the world, uh, around the country, and um, it's one of those things that, you know, I'll ask, have you used Cortex? They go, yep, uh, still don't, you know, never responded. So 
the thing is that um, I get some difficult patients, uh, but that's why I heard, hired a nurse practitioner, so I'm trying to give that to her. <laughs> give me a little break. <laughs> All right, so um, B5, why is B5 important? That's a pentothetic acid. Um, anyway, it's been shown to help with uh, adrenal uh, hormone production uh, and also helps make coenzyme A. And coenzyme A is a crucial um, uh, enzyme um, needed in our body. Vitamin C is basically the highest concentration of vitamin C that goes uh, stored in our body is the adrenal gland. So our, we don't make vitamin C. We have to, you know, basically our body, we're not, I don't, we need to basically supplement with it or um, to be, we need to, you know, have a lot of fruits that has high dose of vitamin C. So anyway, uh, vitamin C is, uh, is really uh, the key thing in terms of treatment of adrenal fatigue. And then ashwagandha is something that we use a lot. Uh, it uh, basically helps in terms of reducing um, infl inflammation and in addition anxiety, and it's, it's, it's a beautiful adaptogen. And then rhodiola, I'm sure you guys, have you all heard about rhodiola? I'm sure you guys are all, well, this is kind of basic stuff, rhodiola. All right. So rhodiola, I tend to rotate, you know, if they're on rhodiola, I don't like to use it month after month after month, you know, maybe three months on and then switch to different adaptogens so that your body doesn't get used to it. But generally, you know, these adaptogens, I try to get them off it um, and really focus on sleep and reduction, uh, doing some exercise and to reduce stress and, you know, just to fix the underlying issue, what their adrenal fatigue is. Uh, there's licorice, and then, um, you know, I wrote a book. Uh, I have a second edition um, that's called Feel Good, Look Younger. I have a whole chapter about adrenal fatigue and, and all that. So. I'm going to actually let Jamie come up, and I think he has some products uh, that he uses uh, for um, adrenal fatigue. So I'll take a little break. Uh, but you have a question? Go ahead. Um, I wanted to know, can you get too much progesterone in you? Yeah, you can have side effects. The question is, can you take too much uh, progesterone? Uh, yeah, you can get acne with progesterone. You can uh, sometimes have a little weight gain with progesterone. Um, you can be um, tired, fatigued, can't get up. So, um, yeah, progesterone is, there are, there's side effects for anything. But, yes, that's why you have to monitor them and see, and see how they feel. Do you and, recommend adrenal glandulars at all? Oh, yeah, they're, they're, I forgot to mention, yes. Um, you can do adrenal glandular stuff. Uh, there's a lot of companies that do that. Um, I think that's a great, great, great way. But I would like to rotate that. I don't like that, you know. Maybe you do adaptogens and then you do the glandulars, you know, just do, you know, a rotation. I mean, there's, there's, it's like, like cooking. There's many different ways to bake a cake. All right. Um, I'm going to have, go ahead. You have a question, then we'll have Jamie. On the glycerinated licorice? Yes. Uh, no, I really haven't seen high blood pressure uh, with it, but um, I'm sure it could happen. That's the thing. Do, do you do you see high? I see warnings everywhere, but I've never run into anybody who's actually had it. So, right. I mean, I have a wife who's got blood pressure issues. She's taken it, not impacting it whatsoever. Right. Yeah, blood pressure is really. Um, it's a silent disease, and I'm surprised so many people with high blood pressure, and, and I usually give them a nitric oxide supplement, and then 10 minutes later we'll recheck, and it usually comes down. So anyway, you know, they're stuck in traffic, or they're running late, and they want to be there on time. So all right, Jamie, um, I'll have him talk, and then I guess we'll take a look. Thanks, Dr. Lee. That was outstanding, so I appreciate it. So I just want to go through a couple of the formulations that he was recommending. He recommended rhodiola, ashwagandha, and licorice. You can find that with also um, some of the other ingredients in Adrenamax 2. So if everyone has that flyer, this is in the booklet and also in the flyer here for Adrenamax 2. So that has a combination of all the adaptogens, especially if the person is adrenal fatigued. He also recommended DHEA, which we have in a liposomal spray, all also in a capsule. 
So we have Adrenamax 2, we have DHEA. And you also had gotten into a couple of unique ingredients, especially the B5, B6 combo. Those are the two main B vitamins you need for adrenal fatigue and stress. So you look at those and you look at the fenubut he was referring to from Russia. We put that in a formula called Comde. Has anyone used that before? I know our staff all raised their hand in the back. I don't know why they're so stressed. They get to deal with me every day. So, so extra calm day is really good for people who have an overworked mind or under a lot of decision making like us and our staff, right? You know, Dr. Lee says, go, 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 go. You know, I'm thinking back the last six, eight weeks, we worked six Saturdays. So we're on the go a lot. We need to help with that. And calm day is excellent. The sister product that goes with calm day adds melatonin and 5-HTP, which he was recommending, that's the sleep time. Okay, so there's a couple formulas you can use if you have, um, you know, in the practice or for yourself. So we're looking at calm day and sleep time to help balance out dopamine and serotonin. Then the Adrenamax 2 to help with adrenal fatigue or adaptogens. And then we have the DHEA. Any questions on those formulas? Yeah. All right, so we appreciate it, yes? Oh, they're in the bags, the products? Oh, the, the ladies were nice enough to give you samples of the calm day and sleep time. We can also introduce those or run promotions in your facility to help promote calm day and sleep time. We usually get about 80 to 90% success rate when you give somebody a sample of those because something they can feel, especially in the first couple of days. All right, we're going to take about a 10-minute break here. Uh, maybe, yeah, so let's go take a break until about... 10 after 11, and then we're going to go into detoxification, and it'll be right on schedule. Thanks, folks.